Are you tired of the same old advice? Everyone keeps telling you to get a strong base with your pull-ups and your dips, but deep inside you want to get to some of the more interesting stuff calisthenics has to offer. If this sounds like you, sit down and relax because the show is about to begin. I have an approach I think will work well for you. Let's go. Now obviously if you want to do well in calisthenics you need to build a good base, meaning you need to work on your pull-ups, your push-ups, your dips and your rows. However, most calisthenics YouTubers will tell you to just work on these and they'll sort of leave you to it like that. I take a bit of a different approach. Personally, I feel like a good way to tackle calisthenics, especially as a newbie, is to pick out a North Star. What do I mean by this? Well, that means that you look to one of the skills you want to learn, one of the advanced or even elite skills out there, and you decide upon taking a few steps in that direction as well. So when I say pick a North Star, I really mean pick one North Star. Not five skills you want to learn, not like you want to learn Hephaesto and one arm pull up and handstand push up and one arm handstand and the planche, no, no. Not even two, I'm talking about a single one. And you might think it's a bit difficult to choose. So how about you do this? You close your eyes and you imagine all of these different skills. Now, if I can tell you that whatever skill you want, but one of them, you can have it right here, right now, when I snap my fingers. Which one would you choose? And right there, you got a mental image of a particular skill, didn't you? Well, that specific skill, whether it's the one-arm pull-up or the handstand, whatever it is, that is the skill you should be working at. However advanced or however easy it might be, that is your North Star. So what this means is that in addition to your regular calisthenics training, you'll spend time working towards this North Star of yours. For example, if it's the one arm pull up, you know, by the way, I've got a link in the description down below. If you're interested as more of a beginner or someone that hasn't trained for the one arm pull up before to look into how to approach this skill, feel free to check that out. But for example, if it is the one arm pull up, obviously you work on your pull ups, you work on your rows, you work on your dips and all of the other basics, right? But you'll also be able to spend some time working on the basics there. So like unilateral hanging, getting to like unilateral scapular pull-ups and shrugs, right? Getting some uh, control of your retraction, depression, start leveling up these more. And you might say that, oh, but then you get a really skewed sort of strength level. And sure, you know, but it's not like you'll unlock the one-arm pull-up within a week. It'll still take a lot of time. The point is though, that it's a good way to maintain sort of motivation and where well, gets the spark, the, the sort of enjoyment that you have for calisthenics. Because that's the thing that is really important. I mean, like as a beginner, when you start out, the most important thing is to enjoy it enough and make it enjoyable enough for you to form a proper habit of it. Because once you get into a habit of it, once you get addicted, so to speak, there's really not too many ways out of it. Are you feeling mad? Yeah. It doesn't matter how you feel. At that point, you naturally start to love it, right? Once you form this as a habit, it's almost addictive in the sense that you don't want to let this go because you love the feeling of training, right? The endorphins that get released. You get building, like you love building muscle. You get to, to love to, you know, grow some size and, you know, improve your strength, improve your skills. All of these things, it gets incredibly addictive. A great success. Right, so like once you get to that point, you sort of sort it in a way. Nice. But to get to that point, rather than just telling you that, okay, yeah, work on dips and push-ups and pull-ups and that's it, it's kind of disheartening in a way. So yeah, recommend just finding that North Star, working on that as well as building the basics. And then you might say that, as I, as I said earlier, right? Like, okay, maybe you get a skewed, sort of a skewed distribution of you being really a lot better at pulling strength and these other things. But is that necessarily a problem? I don't think so. If you're a ton better at pulling strength, by the time you get to sort of closing in on a one-arm pull-up, or by the time you become like intermediate to higher intermediate, maybe even advanced in, in within calisthenics, then it's, in my eyes, simply as easy as being like, okay, let me now dedicate some more time to training a pushing scale, for example, or working on my legs. Like, you know, all of this is like, it will never be perfectly balanced out between legs and push and pull and all of these things. You'll sort of change it up a bit as you go and as you as you work different skills. So yeah, even if the North Star you've picked out for yourself right now is quite darn unrealistic for today, stick to it. Have it as this motivating, motivating aspect of your training that you can start training for a more elite skill and see progress slowly but surely in that domain as well.